secular songwriter wrote and sang, Hear the word, make it a better place for you and for me and the entire universe. I believe that song was pointing to every individual on how you relate your actions, your deed around your environment, where you work. In organization, he was pointing to every individual to make the world we're living in a better place. But this question comes to mind. Is the world a better place? This question is left for you and I to answer. Welcome to Real Talk on Celebration TV. This is a very special episode for our sixth anniversary. Celebration TV is six. I'm not in the studio alone to mash at this topic that I'm going to release to you. First of all, we go on a short break, don't go nowhere. When I come back, I introduce my guest, then the topic. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, uh, you are on to Real Talk on Celebration TV, a special episode for our sixth anniversary, Celebration TV 6 today. That, and quickly, the topic is domestic violence. Domestic violence. My, my first guest I have here uh, is uh, Dr. Sampo Ibimerom. Dr. Sampo Ibimerom is a Nigerian born British citizen is a highly experienced and seasoned intellectual, an expert in rural development and international development studies. He is a specialist in large-scale mechanized commercial rights cultivation and economic value chain process. He had worked in various capacity as a consultant, a lecturer, a director for a number of small, medium and major blue chiefs companies in the UK and overseas. He has stayed in the UK for over 40 years. Welcome, Dr. Sam Pampo. Thanks so much. Thank you Good much. to see you. And my second here, guest I have here is the pastor. He's Pastor Vincent Christopher Jaho, a pastor in charge of Omega Fire Ministries, Triumphant Grace, Milan, Italy. Pastor Victor Vincent. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. And the third is a legal practitioner, is Barrister Mark. He is a legal practitioner, a politician, a one-time local government chairmanship aspirant for Isako West local government. Barrister Mark, good to see you. Thank you very much. Welcome. And our topic today is domestic violence. Domestic violence. Now, on newspapers and over the TV and radio, we hear about uh, the Boko Haram insurgents. We hear about uh, rape cases we hear about different crimes or the other but we hardly see on the newspaper or hear in the radio about domestic violence most often the government the non the organizations they've swept this under the carpet and victims of this crime they are left there wallowing in their ignorance and dying in silence that's why we are here today to discuss about this topic and intimate our viewers for them to know their right whenever they are trampled on they know where to go and certainly the law will take its course barrister most people watching us right there i will tell you they don't know what is domestic violence because most time it happens to them they don't have any idea so um, i wanted to come with the from the legal perspective what is domestic violence because i want i want our audience to know what it means well, by definition of domestic violence, does not have one strict appeal definition. Okay. But I see it as a an act of one imposing his own will on another person through the use of force. You know, you there's an aspect, there's something you want for someone, but you feel that you have to impose force because the person is less powerful than you are. Yeah. Maybe at two in your workplace, you have a power and you feel that the best way to use it is to impose it on someone and if the person fails or exhibits any attitude of not willing to comply with it then you apply force great uh, pastor vincent you're here now people see violence to be only where there is a scar 
um, when uh, sexually. I believe there are other forms of violence, like he said. Most people do not even know. Like I was making a study, emotional violence. People don't even know. There's one I saw that got me frightened. Say image-based violence. I, I said, what does this mean? You mean if somebody gets your picture, for example, if somebody happened to have your picture, then maybe you are on boxers or whatever. He tells you, I'm going to publish this picture. You have to do this against your will, or else I'll publish it. He says an abuse, and it happens in our society. Yes. So types of uh, what other types of abuse do we have that most people don't even know about? There are three major types. The first one is the verbal violence, okay. which we are much more used to in our society. And the next one is the physical violence. And the third one is the sexual violence. Out of these three, break out the other ones which we can speak about as we go ahead. The, the vocal, the, uh, the audible violence is what the one you speak. Like when we were small, I remember they used to tell us, you're not, you're not good at this, you're not good at that, you're good for nothing child. One thing is this, no matter how old the child gets, those memories never go away. Yeah, that's right. Any form of violence leaves a scar, physical, spiritual okay. on the child as the child grows up anytime it comes to something that looked like that he or she remembers what they went through and most of the, most of the ones i've seen in the western world they lock up they don't know who to talk to they don't know how to come about it they don't know what to do but in the african society you are even scared to speak about it one, you'll be mocked for saying it. Two, you'll be punished for doing it. And we don't, I don't think, Barris, I don't think we have any, any legal frame that part of the law that speaks about these things, that acts really upon these things to make sure the offenders are brought to the book. When we look through the Bible, we see John 3, 16, which is much more fun, uh, popular. He said, for God so loved the world. I believe as a Christian, everybody should try to exhibit that type of love. Not only to your, your children. Because one thing I say is, we love our own more than any other one. But we should show this love equally, out, to, equally yeah, to everyone. To the house girl, to the driver, to the gardener, yeah. to the cook, the houseboy to the one that your laundry man that comes to worship yes, you. Yes. Not because he mixed one color with another one, the thing is washed, then you <laughs> bring all sort of accuse on the person. And there's nothing else I've noticed now. In the society today, there's no more patience. Everybody wants to get everything now. And that pressure is what is leading to this violence. Cool, yes. Because actually that, that, was, that is my next question. Because I believe violence didn't just come like that. There should be a root cause of this violence. Because sometimes people just react when you ask them, why did you do this? What, what prompted you? They tell you, I don't know. Most often I see people that are into crime that they want to be punished. But you have done something, you are afraid the Lord doing it to you. They ask, how come instead of this? I, I don't know, but I see myself doing it. What actually is the cause? Of domestic violence um, to people. There has been a lot of recorded studies in terms of the causes of abuse. Some are what we inherited. Some are because it's seen happen in family, and as an abuser, the tenants are not abuse office. Some are environmental, cultural, family related. Some could be even spiritual, for example. Mm. Some mm. could be as a result of economic situation. You cannot exclude poverty from everything else. Okay. The environment in which we grow has an impact. As the first mentioned a while why are we becoming very impatient nation? Now, we have a number of forces fighting against us, and all of this tend to cause. In our religious settings, we are taught love one another as a sin. Because the God we know of the Old Testament is quite different from the God we know in the New Testament. As we hear about God of fire, God of anger, God of war, God I need to fear. In the New Testament, 
Thank you very much. Um, to my barrister, uh, we have been able to establish this fact that there are, there is sexual, uh, there is um, domestic violence, and uh, we've been able to mention the types. Now, my question here is, and uh, there, there are laws, like you said, you started. How viable are these laws to the perpetrators of uh, this dastardly act compared to the Western world? I thank you very much for that question. Like in any other country, Nigeria, let me use the case of Nigeria because I believe that is the context for which you are speaking. Yes. Now, there are laws that regulate any kind of violence, whether sexual, physical abuse, whatever you call it. But another thing that you must understand when it comes to Nigeria setting is that we are some uh, a kind of uh, how would I put it? Now, there are also limitations because in our laws, the victim is the one that is I don't want to press charge. You know, now it goes by will because any kind of abuse is criminal in nature. Yes. When it is physical, you can go down, you say, I'm assaulted, you report to the police, the police will carry an investigation at the end of the day. If they found kind of merit in it, the charge to court. But the, the, the problem, the limitations that this law has faced over the years is that in the case of the Nigeria City, families come in. For instance, we have what we call taboos in Nigeria. Yes. We say the wife, for instance, in my own culture, they will say the wife cannot take your husband to court. You cannot even use police to arrest your brother. It's forbidden. Now, now if, if an husband physically assaulted the wife. They believe that by the time you go to the police to arrest your husband, you have already broken down marriage automatically. Those things are there. And the woman is scared to even report to the next neighbor what is happening to him. The best that she can do Just is to go to the family, report to the man's family. And in most cases, the family of the man will support the man to say, yes, it happens to us. Yes. So, why are you so it's a family that? issue. It's a family issue. That's a to us. Now, if it is, again, the woman, the man will be ashamed to report to his family because after you go to your family and say you are beaten up by your wife, so it's you can, it's unheard of. And again, if a lady or a child is sexually abused, it becomes another problem. Yeah, yeah, barrister, please. We're going to show one of the women break. When we come back, I'm going to start with you. Okay. But quickly, let's go on a very short break. Let's go on a very short break. When we come back, we are still on this issue: domestic violence. Don't go nowhere. Yeah, welcome back to Real Talk. Um, still, we are dealing with the topic, domestic violence. And uh, my analysts are still with me in the studio, uh, dealing on this topic and making it very, very uh, clear that we understand what it's all about and how to go about it when we are victims of uh, this dust of the art. Um, Barrister, if I'm, to, if I'm to ask, you said when in Nigeria, for example, when there is this problem, you go to the court or to the law that there is this restriction because of the family matter in america uh, don't they have it's not a family matter i believe it's a problem if there is a law the law shouldn't be restricted i guess well i can understand where it's coming from yes because our law is driven from a culture okay so you find a cultural aspect of it don't think that at least that's a barrier so this, well it can't be this is this work and see the issue of abuse it has a cultural and traditional aspect of it. Okay. Now the legal aspect is secure. This is what it does. It's a crime. A crime is a crime. 
and the family could say, well, if we shame on our family, we don't want to expose ourselves to the family. <laughs> and so let's bring it home. So that's and why the crime will continue. And it continues. What's in about our system is that you would need, the prosecutor need the victim to establish that crime. But okay. the time the family are okay. withdrawing okay. the victim to say we don't want to go to court. Okay, okay so that means the well, law has no, no witness. Him. So okay. the matter of natural is going to die because mm. the person who is a victim that will come to court and say yes, yes don't want the, the, the case to be is no longer available for the prosecutor. Do, do, that is why you see in, in an advanced country you have this uh, witness protection program. Yes. To have a witness to prove their case, they will go and hide the witness. Maybe if something like that is available here, there is a body that will be responsible for the victim and will draw the victim from the family. I use him to prove the don't you, would have been better. Yes, don't you think the problem here is because of lack of education? You're yeah. not well informed it's about it. Because the truth is cultural uh, we Africans it's, here we are. Well it could be education because Africans are highly educated. But if you can just take it for what you said and then if a victim because the family said one well, very from the culture and it happens to somebody else, that we don't have the courage to go to the police. You say well, if I go to the police in any way, it won't matter no way because that phone comes and probably drop anyway. And the victim and people try to carry on doing that and we say, oh, I'll get away with it. And it goes on unabated, mm. year after year. Mm. And it matures to the next level. Um, now we are talking, we have a government. So what is the role of the government? Well, in this minute, uh, maybe I'll come to uh, Pastor Vincent, the role of the government. Because what I like about the government has a big role to play. Uh, there's a saying, after uh, divinity, the next is the government. Yes, all right. Thank you. Listen, the government we are supposed to come in into this issue and go start from the grassroots. Okay. Because the family is the smallest form of the church. And when you look at what Satan is doing today, it is to affect the family. Yeah. Satan yes. is act for the youth, not for the elders. Hmm. If you read the book of Genesis chapter 18, verse 19, he said, I know if I know Abraham, for he shall bring up his children teach his children after me today now we don't see parents that carry their children sit their children down and teach them not teach them assignments and teach them morals we are talking we are talking about courts we are talking courtesy we're talking about violence you see the father in the house the children they learn from what they see okay children are very good learners they shot the 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 the, the, the one the watch the, what they watch is what they remember most yes. best. They say the father always coming. If the mother refuses to greet him, he will slap her. When he goes out, he feels that is the norm. When he goes out, what does he do? When he sees his mate, he, he slaps. Slap. He will slap today. Tomorrow he go slap before because he refused to greet me. Good morning in the class. We are classmates. And it's growing. So how do you want that one now to come and check? This is where the government comes in with programs that will be geared at teaching these kids right from the onset. Yes. Even the issue of child abuse, at times I, I listen to people, even parents that are saying, let's play this scene in Loki so that that group will not be aware. Uh, yeah. Because when they are aware, they uh, yeah, the matter will be okay. the matter. So, they are the, all those groups they exist but if you are not a victim yes. for instance okay. and you are not you have not passed through the same process, process you will not understand that they are there okay to protect a child there are ngos they are everywhere they are in the those states and i also remember the last about three weeks ago i had a similar issue at my street court where a man was charged to court over uh, physically i mean sexually abusing a child or in the said assault and even when the parents came to say, of course, we want to withdraw this matter from court, we don't want people to hear. Yeah. There are some persons that we are making advances to ensure that those groups are reached. So Most of these serial killers and high offenders in the Western world, we are victims of abuse. Domestic violence. One way or, or the other. other. They grew with this pain and the pains now make them to do it's what good. they're doing. So if you look into the society today, look at the youths, it will tell you they've been abused so much. Thank you very much. Um, I know we have a little time. Um, most often we believe only females and children are victims of this. But sometimes the male folk 
are also victims. Just too many chipping something. We are all victims of victims. Yes. But what people believe is only the female gender and the children are. But like, like what we were discussing behind the camera, most of the male victims, they don't want to come out. They are shy. But would that help the economy? Would that help the world? Would that help uh, the, the society we're living in? Education yeah. comes in open minded and how, how often are we to get a way to speak of it? Okay. We are either clear or don't say anything because either become ego hmm. or it may affect the family anyway, so you're not supposed to do so. And so, but it's not right. The issue of consciousness comes in. Yes. If you can realize that man as man, that we are more of the way I interpret human man, by nature of a man, that we are spiritual beings for having a human experience. Mm -hmm. So, what the church has succeeded is really and to help them that the good principles to see can we resolve this within us. If it still goes to the same thing where you say the families are coming in, because we are always look at ourselves like a family. I, I have a typical example of a man who actually goes to, he, he can't even associate with any other person, and physically, I know the person. Because the wife is always there to ensure that when it comes home, he will not have food to eat. Mm -hmm. And that is another pattern by starving the person to ensure that because you disobey me, there's no food for you. Parents do this to children. Yeah. But here you have a wife who needs to the to husband. His, to his husband. Because the man, one way or the other, does not have a viable means of survival. Okay. He can't, he, the, man, the man is a victim of it because. He must be with the wife at every particular point. He cannot associate with his pairs. He cannot discuss outside because once he does that, the woman just comes outside. Just by mere look, the man will just the stand up. Like, <laughs> My pastor, sorry, um, uh, our, our time is already up. Okay. So I want to say in just a minute, okay. your last words to okay. the viewers. One thing I want to tell everybody is this. Let's leave the word that we hear from the word of God let's practice love amongst ourselves let's show it and demonstrate it not just say it and we'll see that we'll make the world a better, better place. place thank you very much if I can just add very yeah. quickly for me in the Bible book of first Corinthians chapter 13 summarized in terms because whether whatever faith we may have or hope we may everything about love if we can wait to demonstrate that love that Christ showed us that God loved the world so much and Christ then died for us that if you can make us a mantra for us, I think all the bad problems will be solved. Thank you so much. Yeah, my barista. Yeah, well, it's all about love. Okay. Love your neighbor as yourself. As yourself. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Viewers, you have heard this intelligent man uh, having uh, explained and dished out everything you need to know about this violence. It's left for you in that little environment you are, in your home, in your marriage, that organization. Take it as a responsibility, as a duty to treat your neighbor what you know you can accommodate don't do it to your neighbor then we'll make the world a better place thanks for joining us this is how far we can go on real talk with victor uh it's very it's very special episode for our sixth anniversary celebration tv being six i appreciate you for being with us i'll see you again god bless you <laughs>